Some think she is supposed to ward off evil, but others think it was a demonic spirit that caused her demise. I'm Dia Wallace. I'll have this story. And if you skip school in this district today, you could end up in court tomorrow. The story in our crackdown on crime. From WBRE-TV, the station that's taking the lead, this is 28 Eyewitness News. Good evening. Right now, state and local investigators are checking out a suspicious package at a local airport. Coming up, you will have the scene at the Williamsport Regional Airport in Montoursville. Authorities there refuse to describe the package, but do say it was discovered about an hour ago at the airport. They won't say where or how it was discovered. At this point, no flights are affected. The terminal has not yet been evacuated, but response teams remain on the scene. As you can see, Eyewitness News is there as well, and we will have more information for you as this story unfolds. Well, the National Guard has completed its tough mission and has pulled out of tornado-ravaged Lake Cary. The Guard has spent the past few weeks securing the storm-damaged area. Now local homeowners must continue the task of cleaning up and coming back. Tonight, I-Team reporter Baron Johnson met with Lake residents. Baron, where do things go from here? Well, hopefully in an upward direction. Now, right now, the people of Lake Cary are not asking for much, just a little elbow room so they can keep working. Now, it's bad enough that the homeowners already have to keep an eye out for looters, but on top of that, neighbors are also concerned about about sightseers who stop by and block the road. Pulling over to park near Lake Cary is a problem. The road is roped off with police tape, and local homeowners like it that way. Now that the National Guard is gone, Mike Mortimer is making sure his property is protected. What do you do now to make sure it's all safe? Well, we went through and uh, padlocked everything up, double security. I've got a lot of neighbors in the neighborhood that are still here, people up above me, so. We're kind of fortunate here. Mortimer admits sure most of his belongings were damaged by the storm, but he still needs to keep them to show his insurance company. Okay. Mel Mills will have to remodel his house and is living here while he does it. Oh, yeah, we have, a, we have a crime watch that the uh, neighbors are going to look out for the other people. If we see a suspicious car in the area, we're going to call 911. Uh, the uh, people are going to keep their passes in the window. So we know if there's a, uh, an unusual car, it won't have the red pass. State police are still patrolling the area and beware of the dog. Across the street, what Verna Prodzik says the tornado left her with nothing worth stealing. They can take whatever they want, and I wish they'd take the wood. So you've taken out your valuables. They're safe? Everything was destroyed. We thought we could save the beds, but everything is gone. At 5 o'clock, the National Guard pulled out. I know. It's bad. Why is it bad? Too many sightseers. I have somebody here to remove the stumps. Now, you know, look at the mess it made. But uh, we have no place to park now, and of course, the, not that I blame them, they want to come in and see the d destruction, but they'll take all the parking spaces up. So it's not like they're in the way, but it's their cars. Right. And it'll probably be a hindrance then, I would think, uh, if they have a heavy machine in the, the yard, you know. Traffic-wise. Right, certainly, people stopping and looking. Yeah. You, you seem to be weathering this okay. You've lost your cottage completely, and you're feeding the ducks and smiling. It, oh, fake smile. <laughs> and that's the attitude for many. Now, just yesterday, Lake Cary property owners held a special meeting, and some have agreed to hire private security guards. And because the National Guard remained at the scene for nearly two weeks, several residents tell us they were able to board up their houses and take their valuables elsewhere to a safer place. What's left on the scene is for the insurance company to sort out. Reporting live, back to you, Kathy. We wish those residents luck. Thanks a lot, Baron. Now, for those who were thinking about sightseeing at Lake Cary this weekend, keep in mind that most fallen trees have already been cut into smaller pieces, and dumpsters now contain most of the house debris. Well, just a few months ago, the hopes and dreams of some area Catholics came tumbling to the ground with an act of vandalism. But today, their spirits rose again as a new Lady of Fatima statue was put in place at the grotto on North Street in Wilkesbury. That's where reporter Dia Wallace is to tell us about a very special homecoming. Dia? Well, all day and all night, people have been stopping by to see and also to pray to the new 1,000-pound pure marble statue. It arrived here this morning by boat from Italy via New York. Now, some of the people think that this original statue was destroyed by evil forces. However, others say they hope that evil force will stay away after an exorcism is performed here at the shrine. 
I personally, whoever did it, was involved with the occult. Ted Zuba of the Lay Servants believes an evil force destroyed Our Lady of Fatima statue in November of last year. And I think the evil was because of the pattern, the effect afterwards. They left a small part of the face there and they put the rosary around it. Police are questioning three teenagers, but no one has been arrested for the crime. Zuba and others think they know who did it. Nicole group from a city high school passed the shrine many, many a month going to a graveyard behind our grotto on Darling Street performing occult ceremonies every weekend. And that group of individuals who had black lipstick and, and makeup and wore black and had their hair painted, um, that group of individuals was not seen passing this shrine after this tragedy had happened, so there is a suspicion they may have been involved. Zuba is planning a spiritual exorcism ceremony in mid-July to ward off future evil forces against this statue. Can you out a little bit? The lay servants say they do not fear future threats of vandalism. In fact, they say they rebounded this time and they could do it again, but they are taking some precautions. This new $15,000 statue is protected by a 24-hour surveillance system and motion lights, all purchased by funds donated by the community after the crime. I've been here before and uh, for a minute I thought it was the old one. We are so happy that she's here. I'm so ecstatic and it's awesome because it's a beautiful thing to see what's, what, she is beautiful. Well, the lay servants are doing things a little bit differently. This time, the new statue is insured for $50,000, as are all the other marble statues around it. Reporting live in Wilkes-Barre, I'm Dia Wallace. Thanks, Dia. Now, police say they haven't made any arrests in the grotto vandalism due to lack of evidence. A Tamaqua area man who already faces trial in the sexual assault of an eight-year-old girl has now been charged in a similar assault on a 10-year-old. 41-year-old Martin Thomas faces additional counts, including indecent assault and corruption of a minor. State police say the new charges stem from information uncovered as they investigated the assault on the younger girl. Thomas was rearranged and is back in the Schuylkill County prison tonight. A student at the Keystone Job Corps Center in Drums is charged with raping another student. Both of those involved are 17 years old. The accused is being held at the Luzerne County Juvenile Detention Center. Butler Township Police say the incident happened in a dorm at the center, which provides federally funded job training for young people. Meanwhile, Scranton police are still searching for a man whom they believe raped a woman in a home in Scranton's Hill section over the weekend. The victim says she woke up early Sunday to find a man holding her face, ordering her not to scream. She tried to fight off the attacker who was able to sexually assault her. The man then left the home. The victim was checked out at a local hospital and is all right. An update tonight in the case of Patricia Shear, the wife of a doctor found guilty of murdering his friend 20 years ago. Mrs. Shear had been charged with perjury and four other counts relating to her testimony at her husband's trial. The perjury charges had already been dismissed, and today Mrs. Shear pleaded guilty to one misdemeanor, false swearing. She was sentenced to 15 months probation, a $500 fine, and 50 hours of community service. Her husband, Stephen Shear, is in prison for the murder of Martin Dillon, who was shot and killed during a hunting trip back in 1976. Well, two people shot by a student at a school in Virginia are in the hospital tonight, but should recover. Police say the 14-year-old walked into Richmond High School in the midst of final exam week and opened fire. History teacher Gregory Carter was hit in the head. 74-year-old school volunteer in the middle there, Eloise Wilson, was wounded in the arm. Police say when they arrested the freshman shooter, he had a semi-automatic handgun. They believe he was actually gunning for another student. This school year, 15 people have died and 44 people have been wounded in multiple shootings in schools around the country. Well, playing hooky doesn't pay in Monrovia, California. When police did some research, they found much of the city's drug, gang, and crime problems were tied to students who were skipping school. As Andy Mahalshek shows us, cut class in Monrovia today, and you'll end up in a courtroom tomorrow. Eight thirty a.m. Officer Bill Couch is off to school. Students between the ages of 12 and 17 better be there when he arrives or there'll be a price to pay. I know 
With 75 kids a day cutting class and gangs and crime on the rise, the city decided to get tough. It passed the law making it illegal to be away from school during school hours without a good reason. Between the hours of 8.30 and 1.30, you have to be in school if you're supposed to be in school. For if senior Sky Luna, who's chronically absent, the law didn't mean much until she found out each ticket now, meant a $135 fine or 27 hours of community service. Seven citations later, she's back in school. In it's made me realize that school is more important than going with my friends because I could see them after school and school's only for about eight hours and it's kind of like a job. It's well known in the schools that it's, um, you know, we're not playing games at all. And neither are most students. The teenage hangouts are deserted. Truancy is down 44 percent. The dropout rate down 54 percent. And daytime crime down 49 percent. They stay in school longer. They'll graduate. They become more productive uh, members of the community, etc and everybody wins. There are similar laws on the books all across our area, especially in places like Edwardsville and Kingston. Now, they instituted a daytime truancy law several years ago, and it is working in a very big time way. In fact, truancy at area schools in those areas is down by 50 to 60 percent, and the crime rate in those communities also down. Police say that kids who skip school sometimes find themselves getting into trouble. For tonight's Crackdown and Crime Report, Andy Bohalschik, 28 Eyewitness News. And if you would like more information on tonight's Crackdown on Crime report, write to us at WBRE TV, P.O. Box 28, Wilkesbury, PA 18773. And still to come on Night Beat, there's road work up ahead, so get ready for delays. We'll tell you all about it coming up next. Then, as the GM strike continues, how are we feeling its effects here in our area? And it might shower, might even thunder some overnight. Looks like we'll do it all over again tomorrow. The forecast and Earth Watch in a couple. We'll be looking for you. You're watching WBRE TV, winner of the Emmy for Best Newscast. You're watching 28 Eyewitness News on WBRE TV. If your travel plans include driving through the I-81-380 interchange tomorrow, you might want to plan to leave just a little bit early. PennDOT will bring in some large steel girders starting first thing in the morning. They will be for another section of the Lackawanna Valley Industrial Highway. And drivers going northbound on 81 will be detoured onto 380 and then back onto 81. Work should be completed by Wednesday night. At the same time, it'll be less hassle to get to the Steamtown Historic Site. You can sit back and relax because now you can take the bus to the train. As of today, Colts buses are including the Steamtown site on several daily runs. The service hopes to make the Rail Museum more accessible to people who don't have cars. Buses will make regular stops at Steamtown through the end of the summer. Well, if you're in the market for a new GM car, your best time to buy is right now. That's because the strike by GM workers in the Midwest means that just a week or two from now, they'll be hard to find. That will mean a rough patch for dealers who only carry GM product like Valley Chevrolet and Wilkesbury. With workers on strike and no new cars on the line, their inventory of Cavaliers alone has gone from 120 to only 14. If something doesn't give, their lot could start to empty. If they don't resolve it over the next few days, I mean, everything really will be, our whole ordering system will be shut down and uh, the only cars we're going to have to sell are the ones we have now. At this point, the car maker and about 63,000 auto workers are still trying to compromise on working conditions. Well, bad news on Wall Street today as the stock market ends the day with its second worst showing of the year. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended up at 8627.93, a drop of more than 200 points. Experts blame another day of jittery selling on Asian markets and concerns about company profits. Well, Republican Senator Arlen Specter is back at home tonight. He was released from Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia late this afternoon. The senator underwent a double bypass operation on June 1st, and then developed a form of pneumonia, which prolonged his hospitalization about a week. As he headed for home today with his wife and some of his children and grandchildren, the 68-year-old senator says he's feeling very good. Well, the cigar smoking conference, the miracle of birth on the World Wide Web, and what could be a tough concept for the public to swallow. They're all part of tonight's Eye on Health.
It sounds awful, but a group of scientists say sewage could be the next source of water. The city of Tampa, Florida released a study today that concludes treated wastewater from the city's sewer plant would meet all health requirements for drinking water quality. The American Cancer Society is in the midst of a conference on the health risks of cigar smoking. The message? That cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. A key goal of the meeting will be to identify additional research needed to make that point. And now, on the internet, the miracle of birth. Tomorrow morning, a young Florida woman will give birth, and you can watch it either on cable TV or by logging on. It is the idea of her doctor, Walt Larimore, of the American Health Network. It's a first for both the America Health Network and the internet. You can log on on ahn.com. Well, Vince has been logging on all night trying to find out when the rain is going to end and yeah. uh, whether or not it will end by St. Swithin's Day, which we talked about at 6 o'clock. Well, as luck would have it, Kathy, we have plenty of time to get to St. Swithin's Day and have it rain then also. St. Swithin's Day is on the 15th of July. Still plenty of time for rain between yeah. then and now, unfortunately. All I remember is uh, my grandmother when I was a kid telling me that if it rained on St. Swithin's Day, mm -hmm. It would rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Sounds rather familiar. Yes, it does. An Biblical in proportion. Yes, <laughs> indeed. So here's hoping it doesn't rain then, but it will rain a little tonight and probably rain a little tomorrow. We'll tell you all about it in just a couple minutes. I'll see you then. Now Eyewitness News continues with your 28 Earth Watch forecast. Okay, let's run down the forecast now for uh, the past, the present, and perhaps part of the future. We're overcast, we're damp, we're foggy, a shower, a thunderstorm, not terribly hot, kind of humid, sound familiar? It's us, North Schuylkill Junior Senior High right now with a 66, the high today, 67. How's that for a spectacular range? Huh? The low is 54, the pressure is falling, humidity is 98%. Under a tenth of an inch of rain so far today and winds are now still coming out of the east northeast at under a mile an hour, gusting to 16. There's fog out there, moist flow continues. The clouds, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow a bit of sunshine. Okay, let's have a look at records. A 93, we haven't seen anything like this yet in 1945. Mentioned this at 6, worth a mention again. Warmest day officially so far now that we're halfway through June with 76 on the 2nd of June. That's the best we've been able to do. 1978, it was 39. The sun will rise and set tomorrow, 5.30. And at 8.39, let's go to Doppler radar. What we have here are some showers across the northern and the northeastern counties. Back through the north central mountains, looks like some thunderstorms in Lycoming County and now down around the Monroe County line and going on down through the Lehigh Valley. Temperature wise at this hour again when we saw it six this is pretty much where it was and pretty much how it's going to be overnight tonight. We're just not going much of anywhere until tomorrow and tomorrow we might actually go to an 80 for a high get a little bit of sunshine out and it just could happen for us. We've got a system lifting in our direction. You can see the warm front right in through here. Uh, again, very kind of soggy and sultry and tropical, especially on the south side. On the north side as it comes up, yeah, we got the same deal for us here. You go back west, what do you see? Yeah, like more rain, all right? No great swath, if you will, of clearing skies. No large area of real estate with clearing overhead. In the forecast, tomorrow a bit of sun. For days after that, Maybe a bit more. Here's your exclusive AccuWeather forecast, folks. For tonight, showers. We could still hear a couple of rumbles and maybe a thunderstorm. This would be the exception. More likely just the showers. Look for fog. Humid, 62 the overnight low. Then tomorrow, the high, 80. Thunderstorm, good shot. Clouds, some sun. Humid again. Tomorrow night, you got it. Variably cloudy, damp, overcast. Yeah, yeah, thunderstorm, 64. All right, you getting tired of hearing this? I am. Wednesday looks like pretty much the same deal. Thursday it could be a dry day. I mean, like a completely dry day where nothing happens and 76. Friday a 78, partly sunny. And on Saturday, some sunshine and a high of 80. So there you have it, Catherine and almost, everyone else. Almost hard to believe that we're finally maybe getting out of this pattern. I would hope so because, you know, you set patterns and sometimes, boy, they're just a mm -hmm. devil to break. They'll stay with you for months on end. We <laughs> will hope. I hope not. I hope we're good. See you later, okay? Thanks, man. Okay. And coming up, it's Night Beat Sports as the United States goes after a win at the World Cup. As always, Jim Miller up next. You're watching 28 Eyewitness News on WBRE TV. 
Now, 28 Eyewitness Sports. Thank you very much and good evening, everyone. The World Cup Championships continued in Paris, France this afternoon with the United States facing a powerful Germany team for the right to play on. The highlights from this one, the United States actually outplayed Germany in the first half today but fell behind when Andy Mueller scored on a header to make it a 1-0 game. In the second half, Jurgen Klinsmann scores the goal to make the final Germany to the United States. Nothing. The United States will play Iran on Sunday. It was media day at Bowman Field in the rain in Williamsport today as the Williamsport Cubs held an open workout in preparation for their home opener Thursday night against Oneonta. The short season club will once again begin the process of getting players ready for that second level of their baseball careers in one of baseball's most historic settings, Bowman Field in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. We do have a young group this year and uh, uh, a lot of new players, first uh, time to the organization, and so they're very eager to play, and they're excited. Um, we have some very good college players uh, uh, on the club, and, and uh, so I think we're going to be real competitive. And uh, like I said, it's a wait-and-see kind of thing, but uh, we are ready to go. Yeah, it's, it's a little different. I mean, you used to working for the same goal as a team, and here you're still doing that, but, you know, you're still competing with each other. And, you know, it might, might drive everybody to work even harder, so... I guess that's good. The Williamsport comes and Oneonta in the home opener Thursday night at Bowman Field in Williamsport. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. Triple-A baseball, the wrap-up of the road trip for the scranton Wilkesbury Red Barons in 10. They lost to the Tides in Norfolk, Virginia. The final was 4-3. Major League Baseball, the Pirates and the Phillies at Veterans Stadium. Left-hander Matt Beach runs into early trouble. Kevin Young takes him to left field and out. A solo home run, one nothing. the Pirates, their only run of the game. Phillies come back, bottom of the fourth inning. Mark Lewis rips a shot to left field. that gets by a diving Al Martin. The baseball rolls to the wall. That chases home a run. The game is now tied at one run apiece. Later in the inning, former Red Baron shortstop Desi Relifer with the base at the right field. That scores Rico Bronia, who does a very nice bit of base running to avoid the tag at home. Phillies led it 2-1. Beach had one of the best games of his young career. He struck out 11 Pirates tonight. Your final, Philadelphia over Pittsburgh, 2-1. Other National League action, Milwaukee at Chicago, the Sammy Sosha home run show. This one goes out over the right center field fence, number 22. Sammy goes to left field and out his second home run of the game, his 23rd home run of the season. Then he takes this pitch over the wall in center field, his third of the night, 24th home runs. He now has 15 home runs in his last 16 games. The Orioles beat the Yankees 7-4. There are Red Barons baseball clinic tomorrow night, 6 o'clock at the Lackawanna County Multi-Purpose Stadium. It's going to be a great time. Thanks a yes, lot, Yes, it Jim. will. Okay. And I, this is Night Beat continues in just a minute. Breaking news to tell you about emergency crews on the scene of a nasty crash in downtown Wilkes-Barre. Apparently one of the victims, a Wilkes-Barre police officer. Let's go live now to Dia Wallace, who's at the scene. Dia? Well, I can tell you that a Wilkes-Barre police officer is right now on his way to the hospital after being involved in a bad three-car crash here at South Franklin and streets here in Wilkes-Barre. As you can see, there's one of the cars involved in the accident. There's also the canine police cruiser. We know the injured officer is patrolman Tom Kubatz. Apparently witnesses say that right after the crash. The canine jumped out of the vehicle and was protecting the vehicle so no one could get near it to help that officer. He is on the way to the hospital now. We'll have an update for you on Eyewitness News Sunrise. Reporting live in Wilkes-Barre, I'm Dia Wallace. Looks pretty nasty. Thanks a lot, Dia. Now let's go to Vince for a final look at the weather. Vince. All right, Kathy. Overnight tonight, we're looking at some showers. Could be a thunderstorm, foggy, damp. You get the idea. 60s will hold it. Fog in the morning tomorrow, some sunshine out. Thunderstorm shower, that chance still with us, uh, still humid. Tomorrow night, the same deal. And Wednesday looks like more of the same. First uh, rain-free day we might see here could be Thursday. Friday, slight chance for a shower. Same for Saturday, but as of right now, looks like a slight chance. So we'll just leave it as a mention. Storms out there. Well, go ahead, I'm sorry. Thursday looking like an oasis of dryness. It's well, not a desert. It's a deluge out there. It would be remarkable if we get a day here that doesn't have anything happening. <laughs> oh, I think no. we'll all be rejoicing if it should happen. We're all feeling kind of tropical. Yes, right aren't now. we, though, hey? Yes, hey. we are. I wish we were in the traffic. Uh -huh. See you later. Thanks a lot, Bye -bye. Vinny. And finally, six games, six championships. Sunday.
Sunday night, the Chicago Bulls basketball team made NBA history with a repeat of their three-peat. Oh, look at that final shot. There it goes. What can you say? Now, the feat itself was unbelievable. Today, Vice President Al Gore saluted the man who played a large part in making it all happen. You're probably going to see him. There he is right there. One of the most talented, well-known players in the history of the NBA, the unforgettable Michael, what was his name? Congratulations on the Bulls win last night. Uh, that, was, that was quite a win. I tell you that, Michael Jackson is unbelievable, isn't he? Just unbelievable. <laughs> Three plays in 20 seconds. Mm. No moonwalking there. Make that Michael Jordan. I think that's what the VP meant. The Bulls, of course, defeated the Utah Jazz for the second time to make NBA championship history. And that is the night beat for this Monday. Thank you so much for joining us. Tonight's show, of course, up next. You have a great one.